All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our, our community stories as we feature the incredible women of Grant Street. My name is Macklin Mosley, and I am community engagement strategist with the City of Durham's Office of Neighborhood Improvement Services. Uh, we are thankful for those of you who are in attendance and who are watching live from Facebook. Um, Neighborhood Improvement Services, we aim to just strive to meet the community where they are in different facets in, uh, in our different divisions. In community engagement, we have the pleasure um, of working with different community members and truly honored to have the opportunity to work with um, and connect with uh, the women of Grant Street who is going to be sharing their stories with you today. And so without further ado, I'm going to take a moment and have them introduce themselves each, and then we will get into the community stories. All right. Uh, to my amazing women of Grant Street, would you mind starting to introduce yourself? My name is Brenda Bradshaw. My name is Vivian Dolores Gunn. My name is Diane McCoy Merritt. Awesome. Awesome. Again, thank you all for everyone for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. I'll start first. Okay. As, as I said, my name is Brenda Bradshaw, and I would like to give you a little history of the Grant Street community. I have a, been a resident of this community for over 100 years. My family has been blessed to be a part of this community starting with my great-grandfather, Rail D. Harris, who lived at 702 Grant Street with my grandmother and her four sisters, Rosanna, Fanny, Anna, my grandmother, Julia, and Geneva Harris. This community has been an intricate part of our family. It takes pride, we take pride in our community and the history surrounding it. It represents the heritage, dignity, and unity of its residents. It embodies the culture. The rich path strengthens an argument for its preservation and revitalization. We are committed to embracing and cultivating the community to reclaim its vibrancy. The community was a striving community and it consisted of the 500 block through the 800 block. Everybody knew everybody. We were a family. When something happened to one family, it impacted the whole family. In our community, we had a minister, an educator, a carpenter, a cosmetologist, nurses, a railway uh, express truck driver, and a formerly enslaved person. The minister was Reverend David Bell. He was the minister of Bell Yeager Free Will Baptist Church. The educator was Miss Maddie Ora Sneed Lee, first grade teacher at W.G. Pearson Elementary School. We were blessed. The majority of the neighborhood members was in her first grade class. And we had to be very, very good. Or when she got off in the afternoon, she would tell our parents. The carpenter was Richmond Allen. He lived at 703 Grant Street. Mr. Allen built his two-story house. It had stained glass windows and a balcony. We would love to go to his house to be able to go up on the balcony. And believe it or not, you could see all the way to the police station. The cosmetologist was my cousin, Joy McManus Gunn and she lived next door to me at 713 Grant Street. You could tell when the weekend would come, you would see people going in and out with their hair pressed and curled, especially during the holiday times. Kids would be going out getting ready for Easter, Mother's Day, and Christmas. 
Joy was also a nurse, including with, with Irma Riddy. They worked at Duke Hospital, now Duke University Medical Center, for over 40 years. The Railway Express truck driver was my grandfather, Theodore Roosevelt McCoy. During that time, there was no FedEx or UPS. The packages would come in on the train and emptied at the train station. The packages were put in the railroad express uh, trucks and they would deliver them to businesses, homes, and the airport. The most important thing on Grant Street was Mr. George Washington Harris. Mr. Harris was given to the family of Mr. Freed Ivory by his brother to work in the fields after his parents passed. But his parents was born as a slave, as born as a slave. Mr. Harris stayed with the slave master until he was able to venture out on his own. And he did. He moved to Durham in the Grant Street community. Everyone loved going to see Mr. Harris and hear Mr. Harris talk about his life, even the mailman. Mr. Harris lived at 706 Grant Street until his death when he died at the age of 109. Now you can see why our community means so much to us. Then came the urban renewal, leaving only the seven and 800 block. We were devastated. Our community was gone. They were told that after the building of the Federal Durham Freeway, that they would come back and build their homes where they could stay. But as you see, it never happened. Our neighborhood homes were replaced with Federal Street Housing Project in 1967 and remained there until 2009 when it was demolished. Presently, the Grant Street community consists of only the 700 block. The block consists of nothing but homeowners. These are the homes our grandparents worked and paid for. Most of us are third and fourth generations living in these homes. The homes in the block ranges from 100 years old to 69 years old. This is why we have no plan of moving. Grant Street is our legacy. Okay, give me. Hi. Awesome. My name again is Brenda. Is <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Vivian Gunn. Uh, my family has always lived on Grant Street. Like Brenda said, it's been over 100 years. And we love Grand Street so because it was a comfortable place to live and people loved one another. The families who lived on Grand Street, as she said, were viable, hardworking families and they were family oriented. I have to repeat that, family oriented. This was the source of their strength because they were family oriented. Homeowners in my family lived mostly on the 700 block. Ownership was a major achievement. It meant that families had a voice as taxpayers. My immediate family lived at 516 Grant Street in a small house that had a porch. We could sit, relax, and talk to neighbors as they passed by. There were four, ch four children in our family, including my parents. My parents were James Gunn, he was a bricklayer. My mother, Joy Smith Gunn, was a beautician, and, and she graduated from DeShazer's Beauty College. She later worked as, an, as a nurse at Duke Hospital. My siblings, Joanne Gunn Brown, we called her hard rock because she was tough. My brother, Oldest brother was James M. Gunn, Manio. He was called that like little man. And Adam T. Gunn, we called him Al. I was called Lorsey Girl, and I was the oldest child in my mother's family. Furthermore, down the street, my grandparents resided at 702 Grant Street. 
My great grandfather, we called him Gramp, lived with my grandparents, and Shirley Ann Smith, my mother's niece, lived with them. Shirley left to go to New York after uh, graduating from Cross Business College. My grandparents had three sons as well, including my mother, George Smith Gunn. Her, the oldest son was Orlando Smith Jr., and they called him Mickey or Flat Tom. Alfred Smith was called Pato, and Stanley Smith was called Bull. While living in Durham, I'll tell you a little bit about my Uncle Pato. While living in Durham, my Uncle Pato owned a fish market, and he also had this great desire for singing. He would sing all kinds of songs and song, songs by Arthur Prysock and Brooke Benton. And when he sang, he sang very dramatically. So he was really a pleasure to look at singing. My grandparents and I, uh, my family, eventually moved to 713 Grand Street. It was further down the street. My grandfather had lived in an old house that was on that lot previously, but it had to be torn down because it was too old and, 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 and tattered. So he had to tear it down. Then they built a new house. And to me, that was a great achievement for the family. And it was even greater for me when I saw the look on my grandfather's face because I th felt that he had done such a great thing and did and achieved a lot. Uh, speaking of my mother and my mother's grandmother, they were very caring and loving people. But my grandmother was especially caring because she would cook for us every day. And you could smell the aroma of her food even before you walked in the house. And also, why do I really love Grant Street? I love Grant Street because it was a family-oriented community. They was always caring and sharing and loving love for one another. And I also love Grand Street because the grandmothers were special. They taught you how to be a homemaker. They would listen to you. They nurture you. They taught you right from wrong, and they gave you a hug whenever you needed. And that's why I love Grand Street. I also love Grand Street because there was a teacher named was Mrs. Minerva Evans. She lived across the street from my grandmother. Miss Evans loved the Grant Street children, and she got us together and put us in a choir, uh, and so a children's choir at St. Joseph Church. And she got us involved in all the activities that were they were having there. So I really appreciated her for that. I also love the fact that that wisdom, that my grand great grandfather was a man of wisdom also. Uh, he had a real great sense of humor and he would keep you laughing and sometimes you'd laugh so hard that your stomach would hurt. I also appreciate the innovation of the people on Grand Street. They could make anything out of nothing, especially my two brothers and his, some of his friends. They could take old skates and make skates out of old skates and make scooters out of them. They could take the skates and make wagons out of it. They took planks and made seesaws. They took ropes and, and made swings using old tires. And one thing that I, sticks out in my mind is that they even mapped out a picture of a, a golf course and they used sticks for the golf clubs and balls for the balls to uh, play golf. I, and lastly, my grandmother taught 
as the true meaning of caring for family. My uncle Alfred Pato had bought her a television from New York. And what she would do, she would set that television in the window and have my relatives and neighbors to come over, sit in her front yard in chairs and watch her television while we sat either looking at television also or we played under this street light. But what really upset me about living on Grant Street, it was when Urban Renewal came in 1965 and I called their Urban Renewal the Dragon of Fire. It struck our community like uh, Brenda had said. People were devastated. They were displaced. And they were just really upset. But foremost, there was never any apologies or redemption for their losses after having such false promises made. My name is Diane McCoy Merritt. I am a lifelong resident of Durham and lived on Grant Street. Reflecting on my childhood and growing up in the Grant Street community, I vividly remember children laughing and calling out instructions for Mother May I, like yesterday. Games included one, two, three, red light, Simon Says, Rock Teacher, Honey in the Bebop, Hopscotch, Ring Around the Roses, and Miss Mary Mack. You rarely heard fussing or fighting in those days because our young minds were generally on how we could outsmart our opponents. Everyone had their specialty, and you hope yours was the one picked for that day. My specialty was cooking in the backyard, using twigs to build the stove with top lids as the pots. I would find the grass rabbit beans, which looked like early June peas, and leaves resembling fish scales for fish. Joanne, Claudia, Atta, and Claude would look for grass nuts. Claude knew what grass had the nut on its root. You would pull the grass out of the ground and a small dark brown nut was at the root. You could eat the grass nut, but the fish and peas you pretended you were eating. You were playing so hard, not realizing it was time to eat dinner until you heard your mom calling you. Children played around the back, while the grown-ups sat on the front porch sipping sweet tea or ice water. In those days, kids had to play in the backyard or the neighbor next door, and we often played all day outside. There was also a time when folks wanted us to feel less than others. But as kids, we only understood how warm and connected we felt being a part of the village. People say it takes a village and we lived that village. Our village include the following families. My grandparents, Theodore Roosevelt McCoy, Anna Harris McCoy and other families listed. I am honored to have lived on Grant Street. It was my pride and joy. Everyone looked out for each other and any adult could discipline us. Love radiates throughout the community. During during that time, most homes had at least one pear tree, apple, strawberry patch, pecan, black walnut, or even grapevines. And as kids, we would take our chance to pick fruit uninvited. <laughs> the trick was to get the fruit without getting caught. Often, we were caught and disciplined by an adult, usually not in an angry or cross way but with love and understanding. The adults explain boundaries and the importance of following rules. 
after they disciplined us, we were allowed to keep the fruit. We didn't understand then the impact those lessons would have on our lives forever. They kept us safe and loved without us even understanding lessons learned. Miss mm -hmm. Jeanette G. lived on Grant Street with her son-in-law, the Allens. Whenever Mama wasn't home, I would stay with Miss G. The Smith and Brain family lived next door. So I often looked out the window and saw Anthony, Vicky, Tim, Claudia, Ada, and Claude playing in their backyards. Miss G's daughter, Margaret, also lived with her. Miss G's room was upstairs. I vividly remember climbing the stairs to her bedroom. Once there, she would sit in her chair and tell me to hand her this black book that she kept on her dresser, and I did as instructed. She tried her best to keep my mind off my mama leaving me. She chatted about everything. Her husband was a veteran, so she often spoke about his time away and the gifts he purchased her during his time away. I later realized the Bible was the black book she always asked me to hand her. She would always read the 23rd Psalm. I often wondered why she would read the Psalm passage each time I visited her. We read it so much that I could recite it. It was a result. It is a result of my favorite psalm. Thank you, Miss G, for the love you showed me and for teaching me the 23rd Psalm. Do any of y'all have a comment on the G's? I admire, I like Miss uh, G because uh, she was a funny person and she always liked the hair scratch. And she would always call me to come and scratch her hair. And that's what I always remember her about and her sense of humor. I remember Miss G, but I call her Miss Jeanette. She would always call us, call me up there, Brenda, come up here and help me. She would have a, a table full of green tomatoes. And she had me to help her chop them tomatoes up. We had all day long to make up. To make cha cha, and that was that's something I never loved because I had to help Miss Jeanette make it. Sometimes Mama would let me visit my friend Margaret Springfield, who lived up the street from us. She lived with her mom, aunt, and grandparents. Her grandparents were mute. When I arrived, I would wave, and Margaret would sign. I didn't know how to sign, but I would ask her what she was saying. And she would tell me, then we would move to the gate and begin our visit with, with each other. I never stayed long, but we enjoyed each other's company. It was the best time. It was so relaxing. I wanted to learn to sign, but I never asked. Walking home, I would pretend I was signing as if I knew how. Anyone have a comment on this? Well, what I, I think of when I think of them, I think of how their parents sign used sign language, mm -hmm. and that really fascinated mm -hmm. me when I was coming up as a child. Mr. and Mrs. Cutler also lived in our neighborhood. Both were visually impaired, but they never let it stop them from working at North Carolina College, now NCCU. Mm -hmm. It was amazing to me how they could walk to work every morning and return every afternoon with no assistance. I would say hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cutler, when I saw them. They knew my voice. One day, I decided to ask Mama if I could visit them. To my surprise, she said yes. So off I went. I rang the doorbell and Mr. Cutler answered, who is it? I answered him and he came outside. He made me feel welcome and comfortable asking questions. Afterwards, he said, wait a minute, went inside and returned with a big book. I looked and then he opened it, moving his fingers back and forth on the pages, reading. I looked at it, then he asked me if I would like to have the book. 
My eyes lit up, and with a great big smile, I said, of course, yes. I took it, thanked him, and headed home. I ran inside to show the book to Mama. She smiled. I went back outside. I sat on the porch's top step and opened it. I was so happy, even though I couldn't read a word. It was a great book for show and tell. Comments on Mr. and Mrs. Cutler? Yes, what surprised me, Mr. and Mrs. Cutler, as Diane said, they would come out of the house, they would make that left turn, and they would walk four, four blocks to Central. He would go down, he had a little shop uh, under the, in, an, under, in the administration building where he sold uh, sandwiches and sodas. And what got surprised me, you couldn't trick him about his money. You can give him a, a dollar and he say $5. He'll tell you, that's not right. This is not the right amount. You gotta give me some, you gotta give me some more money. That's one, I don't know how he could feel that money, but he could feel that money and tell what it was. Now, Listen, it sounds like he doesn't play no games. <laughs> he didn't play any games. <laughs> oh no, you've been fooling. <laughs> and what fascinated me about Mr. Cutler, I don't know how he did it, but there would be several cars parked on the street, and he always, when he got near every one of those cars, he would always turn and keep straight. He never walked into any of the cars, and I thought it was quite fascinating. Miss Roberta McNeil and daughter Pam, who lived in the neighborhood, were close family friends. Mama would often watch Pam while Miss Burt worked. Pam and I were close in age, so Pam had to tag along everywhere I went. We spent a lot of time at W.G. Pearson. We would swing, we would slide down the sliding board and watch our neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson and their friends play baseball. We would also go during the summer, during parks and recreations, offered boxed lunches during camp. We looked forward to lunchtime since we didn't, we weren't old enough to check out books at the Stanford L. Warren Library. We spent most of our time at W.G. Pearson and had so much fun. And I no have a comment about Miss Roberta, Miss Burt? I do. I remember, I call, like we say, we called her Burt. She would buy expensive flowers and she'd get out there every spring and till that soil and plant those flowers. And I would always say, why in the world is she out there in that sun planting that? I, I would never do that. And guess what happened? I started doing it and end up having a love for flowers. And I would always say, look up in the say, thank you, Bird. <laughs> Miss McNeil could make the best turkey salad you have ever put in your mouth. She would get a, cut the, a cook that turkey breast and she would get her a pair of scissors and she would cut that meat so fine. And Lord have mercy, I would sit over there and wait and wait and <laughs> wait and wait until she gave me some. She's gone, but Lord, I still can taste her turkey salad right now. <laughs> Listen, that sounds really good. All I can say is that sounds, y'all making me hungry. And that ain't fair. It's not fair. Hey, quick question. Would y'all mind if I show a couple pictures uh, in between this? And is that okay with you all? Can you all kind of share some of them? Okay. Let's see. Um, so I know you mentioned, uh, Ms. Vivian, this is, I'm assuming this is Poe that you mentioned. Am I right? Is that the right name? Pido. 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 Okay. 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 All right. And so this is his. This is his. Um. Well, I'm, I'm struggling with the instrument name. Continue. Sorry. He called it a bass fiddle. Now okay. The bass. Okay. That's he awesome. Was, excuse me. And he was the one that had the band Al Smith and the Famous Gloves. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. All right. And then um. I know right here we have this just the Smith and Gun family, and that's you, Brenda. Okay. Yeah, I'm on there. I'm next to my brother, the tallest one. Okay. Uh, oh, that is you. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And then that's you, Brenda. Okay. Uh-huh. And let's see. We have some birthday party. Do y'all know about this picture right here at the birthday party? Whose birthday? Tell us about it. Okay. We're at the birthday party. Uh, it's you. That's me. Which Joe. one is you, Miss Diane? Right there. The Saturday. 
Exactly. Oh, right here. That is yeah. you, Miss Diane. <laughs> I <laughs> see that's you all day. <laughs> um, my and my cousin Joanne is the okay. um, is the like the one beside the the boy standing up with the party hat. Right on. here. Okay. Yeah. And the other ones look like the Allen's um children, grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is cool. That's cool. And do y'all know whose birthday you were celebrating or I think that I was Chris's family's birthday. I didn't see Chris the McQuaid. Uh -huh. Oh. Might okay. have been McQuaid, so I'm not sure. Okay, that's cool. Okay. And then right here I've just put family. And so would y'all mind sharing a little bit about these? <laughs> That is La that's Lamisa to the left. Uh-huh. And the, the lady is Grandma Fanny. Fanny and I, my grandmother. Yeah. Okay. That's and awesome. That, and that's our cousin Lori and Dee Dee. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. And then down here. That's me. I had graduated. And I was standing with my mother. And that was uh my little my cousin Dee Dee. Okay. That's awesome. So it's okay, so Didi and Didi. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. All right. Well, let's go there. And, and then Ms. Diane, if after these, if you want to continue, I would love to keep hearing you more of what you're sharing. Um, but um, yeah, so right here, I'm assuming this is you, Miss Vivian. That was me. <laughs> Listen, dressed up, decked out. Come on now. I thought I was a deep at that time. <laughs> that came out. And that was my niece. Okay. Nikki, her name was Nikidra, and that was my mother. And we were standing on our front porch. And the other picture that you see was a picture of a uh, Fable Street. And that's where my brothers and some of his friends used to go. I'm not sure what the name of that store was, but I think it might have been PNW. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, I see the PNW right there. Yeah. Yo, do y'all know what street this is? Do you know what block or street? This is Fayetteville Street. street. It's right? Fayetteville Street. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. That's cool. That is a cool memory. Linwood. Oh, Linwood. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. All right. And we'll stop right there. And then, uh, Ms. Diane, if you want to continue sharing, and then we'll get onto the other part of the pictures. Okay. Miss Brown was another neighbor. She sold candy to the neighborhood kids. We all love going to visit the candy lady. My cousins, Joanne, Allen, James, who is Manio, and the rest of us would go to buy candy. She kept the candy in a glass jar. She sometimes would allow you to reach in the jar, but not seldom. Most of the time, we pointed to the piece we wanted. We placed it in your hand. She placed it in your hand. He gave her your penny for your penny candy. We would run back home excited and ready to eat our candy. We always shared. Those were some good old days of learning and sharing. Anybody want to talk about Miss Brown Candy Store? <laughs> well, I didn't really go to Miss Brown Candy Store because I was mostly a house girl. Uh, but what that <laughs> I said, they would always run around trying to get some pennies so they could buy candy from Miss Brown. Miss Brown was Miss Brown didn't take no wooden nickels though. <laughs> no sir, buddy. If she didn't like it, you didn't get no candy from her house. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Durham Housing Authority built Federal Street housing projects. I made friends with our new neighbors living in the apartment and my best friend, LaVonda Bullock Uchi, who also happens to be my daughter's godmother. My new best friend was a planner and loved to throw parties. She would plan the birthday party for my daughter every year, complete with balloons, party horns, candy, and a birthday cake made from scratch. Her mom, Miss Edna Cotton, worked at the bakery in Hilton, Haytai, where she baked it. Carl and Truett Liggett was another friend living in the apartments, who I will never forget. I made so many friends, too many to name. I will forever cherish these memories and carry them in the depth of my heart. 
My hope is the legacy that I created and so many others will continue to live on for generations. This is it. This ends. Yo, right thank you so much. That I think what's so awesome is that like each of you have your own perspective from your experience of growing up and at the same time it's all the same story too at the same time so it's it's like you're like this is what you remember is something you treasure this is something you treasure and this is something you treasure and yet it's something you all also equally treasure um like miss mm -hmm. diane when you were sharing about the different people and you're asking hey do y'all have a memory about this person do you have a memory about this person i think that's so <laughs> neat because you all share those memories right um mm -hmm. miss vivian i do want to know i think you may have said it was your mom or your grandmother that cooks that was always the cook and i just want to know what was like your favorite meal from from her i like she could make the best fried chicken and i love mm. that fried chicken and she had this black skillet and we always we were always thought about who would get it if she passed away i got the paint <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> you know, and something else I we I remembered we um, I, Diane said we had plum trees, we had pear trees, we had apple trees, we had um pecan trees, we mm. had walnut trees, and Miss uh Ora Sneed Lee had two pear trees. She had one on the side of her house and one in the back. And mm. her, now she, she was free hearted. She would give them mm -hmm. to you when they got right. But kids, they couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would get at the wait till Miss Lee would go to sleep at night and they would throw uh, branches and try to knock the pear trees down. <laughs> so one, yeah. one, uh, knock the pears down. So one morning, Miss Lee called because they called my grandmother Todd. Say, Todd, send these kids over here and, and, and bring a stick to get these pears off this tree. I am so tired of them kids waking me up at night. So Diane and my brother Howard and I went over there and we came back with a almost a bushel of pears. They weren't exactly right, but what <laughs> back my grandma did back in those days, she would get we had newspaper. She would wrap every one of those pears up in newspapers and she would put it in a dark place. She said, don't you all bother these pears, say, because they're not right yet. And you all wait till you get ready to go to school and you all have a pear. Those were the best pears we have e I have ever tasted. And to add to that, with those pears that Ms. Uh, Lee would give us, our mm -hmm. grandma made preserves. And I used to w love watching my grandmother make preserves. So... All of the grandmothers mostly had preserves on Grand Street. Fresh yeah. preserves with that breakfast. Mm -hmm. We had mm. we had a great we had a grapevine. And oh wow. And we would had to go when the grapes got ripe, we would have to go out there and pull them grapes. My mother would make grape jelly, but my granddaddy <laughs> wanted grape wine. <laughs> so he would squeeze that juice out of them uh, in a in a a white sack or something to get all that juice out. And he had a tall, uh, heavy bow, uh, jar. He put mm -hmm. that juice in there. He said, rabbits, don't y'all bother this because this ain't <laughs> right yet. He's, you said rabbits? That's, 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 what called, that's what he called us, rabbits. No, I love it. I love it. That's just cool. <laughs> don't y'all don't y'all go in this jug. He said, okay, daddy. He kept that stuff there about a, about a year. When he popped that top off that jug, that was some good smelling wine, and it tasted. Mm. Flipped it. He would put it in the refrigerator, <laughs> and we would go in there and sip a little bit of it, so he couldn't tell that we were that we, that we were drinking his wine. Uh oh, <laughs> but it was delicious. It was good. That's awesome. That's awesome. All yeah. right, well, let's look through a few more of these picks. I just I'm, I'm loving this time. I think it's so awesome. Um, so 50th wedding anniversary. That's my grand, uh, grand, grand grandparents called them. Uh, awesome. called, that was Roosevelt and Anna McCoy. They was married 50 years. And wow. at the same time, my grandfather retired from the Railroad Express Company. And he that the wedding anniversary and his retirement party was all in one. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. 
And then hula hoop. I, this is literally one of my absolute favorite pictures. I'm sorry, Ms. Diane. What were we going to say? I'm sorry. Hey, those were my parents, too. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so awesome. And this, this listen, this is one of my favorite pictures. When I first saw this, I said, listen, good times outside. <laughs> Tell us. Let's let's hear who's the who's the best hula hooper oh, on Grand okay. Street. We got to know. I'm with the dress in the middle. In the okay. middle. Okay. Joanne is with the hula hoop with the shorts on. On the, okay. on the left. On the left. That's Pamela. That's Pam. Oh, Pam. We're on the left. On the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. And that's Joanne. Okay. And the the little boy I'm is thinking is is Alan. The boy. Okay. okay. In the middle, the little boy. This Pamela. Okay. This Pam. Oh, right, okay. Okay. That's the little girl that used to follow me all the time. You know, I had to keep okay. her me all the time. Uh -huh. That's okay. Pam. <laughs> and, uh, on the hula hoop, Joanne and I would have a hula hoop contest. Mm. We would down to our knees, our ankles, and bring it back up to our hips. Hey! Hula hoop. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they couldn't tell y'all nothing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love that. I love that picture so much. All right. So let's see. So I noticed that there's these are uh, different just obituaries. Um, and I know it's of people who are close to you all. Would you all mind sharing uh, something about uh, the people on these pictures? Well, the lady on the left, Miss Roberta McNeil, that's mm -hmm. the turkey salad lady. And that's Pam's mom. Oh, okay. 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 One the the man is Mr. Washington Harris, the, the the slave that one was a died at 109 years old. Wow, yeah, yeah. And the lady on the left is um right. Mrs. Lee. On the right that's is true. Mrs. Lee. That's, that's the true. first grade, that's the first grade teacher that majority of us went we went, went through her first grade class. Okay. And she okay. Had, okay. The pantry lady. That's awesome. Okay. Well, that's cool. So this is okay. That's a that's amazing. Um, wow, it's, it's it's the very people that you all have been talking about. Like just to see, I know just to see the picture. I know it's a picture, but like there's so much even just history right here in these people. And I remember, like I said, the moment you said the turkey salad, you know, I told you I was hungry, so it already had me. The moment you mentioned <laughs> Miss Bird and McNeil. Yeah. Okay, so this is Pam's mom. Oh, Pam's you know what? They look what alike. My grandmother used to keep, you know, when her mother would work. Birth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. They look alike. They Dude, that's do. Her mom. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? I just thought about it. I'm like, wow, they do look alike. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. And so we got this picture right here, Diane. With yes. that that jacket on that jacket on point. Props. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. I like the jacket. <laughs> so you're like, uh, tell us about this picture. Well, that's my grandbaby, granddaughter that's um, in the middle. That's mm -hmm. that's Lamisa. I'm okay. sorry, it's my granddaughter Lindsay. Mm -hmm. She looks uh -huh. so much like my daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's Claude, better known as Lee Jr. That's the one that could find the grass nuts in the backyard. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and we're standing in front of my grandmother's house, better known as my mama, 715 Grant Street. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And so she was a notary public as well? Brenda. I, I was. Brenda was oh, a okay, okay, okay. Cool. Me. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So let's see. Did I? I just want to make sure I didn't skip it. Okay. Cool. So this house is the Richmond Allen House. Would you yeah. all mind sharing about that? This is yeah. the house that had the stained glass windows in it, and and where the parties closed in, they mm -hmm. opened it up later, and they put banisters out, and that's where we would go and stand, uh -huh. and we could look all the way. You could look downtown to the police station. We used to love to go up there and get up on the top and peep out and see what we could see. And especially cool. through fireworks, that was something beautiful. But the house is torn down now. Mm, OK. And was that on the 700 the block or? 706, that's the, right there. that's, that's, uh, that's, the, when, that's uh, what Mr. Richard Allen, he built, that's the house that he right, built. Right. He built, he built okay. that house himself. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Wow. And it also is the house where Miss Janae, Miss Janae, Janae, she lived in. That's the one that called twenty third song that I would have to read every day. Ah, okay. I love how it's all coming together after hearing your stories and then like seeing. I love that. I absolutely love that. That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so now we have some more pictures. Diane. Okay. <laughs> On the right is Diane. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and the next picture is me. My my grandmother kept kids, and she kept Leroy and Lisa. They are grown now, and they are married. But wow. they were uh, they stayed down in they stayed down in the eight hundred block of Grant Street. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right, and so this piano, I thought it has some that some significant piano, meaning. Significant behind that, uh, when my mother got it, my uh, uncle Pato <laughs> loved to play the piano and sing, and he'd mm. get on there and start singing like Arthur Prysock and Brooke Brenton, mm -hmm. and then when the music would get good, he'd stop right in the middle, middle, uh, middle of it and hold his hand out to say, Where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I also like because that, that picture that's on there is the picture of the family that we pre that was previously shown. Mm. Oh yes, right here. Yep, uh -huh. right there. Like yeah, that's yeah. yeah. That's oh, and that's, that's Shirley that I mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. the picture right next to it. The one next to it. You can hardly mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Shirley. Yeah. They call Shirley Sharp now. Okay. That's the candy lady. That's Miss yeah. Brown. That we would go buy the pen of candy. <laughs> <laughs> That's her house. That's cool. Okay, so she's the one, but but y'all said that she didn't play no games with the candy. Like you can't give her no wooden nickels, right? No, right. oh, Miss Brown was no. something. And you could Ooh. only put your hand down in that jar and pull out which one you want if mm -hmm. she like you. <laughs> <laughs> if she like you. If she didn't, you didn't get your head in there. No, you didn't get it out. I could only imagine the adventure <laughs> to get that sugar candy. Yes, yes. And that's the Cutler's um house. The the blind uh, couple that worked for North Carolina College. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, he would come out there and he'd come out there and make that live. <laughs> and you said North Carolina College, it was North Carolina College, but it's central now, right? Uh -huh. Central now, right? Okay, okay, that's cool. Okay, okay. I'm learning, honestly, I'm learning a lot about Durham and about you all through this time in our community stores. I think it's great. Um, and I know you mentioned their residents before, and I know we shared this earlier, um, mm -hmm. but these are some of the community members you mentioned, or the families. So that's amazing to know that, like, you know, it's not just one person, it's uh, multiple people that are coming from these families, and, and it's what made the community what it was. Um, right. And while, unfortunately, you know, we know the different things that have happened, um, it's also great to still see you all thriving and going and doing all the things you're doing too. I think that's awesome. Um, and I think, let me see, I think that's it. So I wanted to ask y'all if y'all have anything else you want to share, any questions, I mean, not any questions, but anything you want to share, anything like that? <laughs> but this has been amazing. I, I'm, I know my personal opinion, I'm, you know, as a, as a person who works for the city of Durham, it's always good to hear our residents. Um, and just to hear, not just hear from you, but to hear you um, and to see you. And so I am grateful for this time and I'm honored um, to be able to hang out with y'all today. Y'all are a hoot anyway, first of all, but <laughs> it's even more of a hoot when I was hearing about turkey sandwiches and <laughs> cooks and the best song. Oh, I have a question. I knew I had one question earlier. Uh, Ms. Vivian, um, Mr. Alfred, what was one of his favorite songs to play? Uh Oh Lord, what was that song that he would sing? Uh, it was by Arthur Prysock, but forgive me, I can't even think of the name. I'm a I'm a little old, but don't <laughs> tell anybody. Uh, but uh, like I said, he would always sing Arthur Prysock's kind of song. I'd probably think about it after you're gone. It's okay. But, uh, that was one of the songs that he would sing. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I thought about it earlier, and I was like, I'm going to ask her, and then I forgot, and all of a sudden it just popped up. So thank you. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Would y'all like to share anything else? I want to talk about the the, uh, the plum tree. We all right. Had, we had a um, the, um, a lady in the seven, 600 block of Grant Street. I had been trying to figure out her name and figure out her name. Her name was Miss Mabel Markham. <laughs> She had a plum, she had a uh, 
a yard full of plums. Plum. She had mm. all uh, hedges and she had a gate in her front. And you were going and try to be nice mm -hmm. and ask her if you could have some plums. And she said, no, get out of my yard. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> but we would beat her. We uh, we would go around Umpster Street and it was a church. <laughs> the Church of God and Prophets, it was there. And it had a little ditch. We would jump across that <laughs> ditch and we'd go through the back way to get in her yard get us some plums. Sometimes they were green, but we still got them. Uninvited. <laughs> Uninvited. Listen, wait till them bad boys get ripe and go to town. I'm just saying. Yes, yeah, but we were kids and we, and yes, you know, had we, fun. we had fun. We had fun yeah. in our neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, well, awesome, awesome. Well, thank y'all so much. You are truly um, a blessing to the community. Um, a blessing to the city and I'm I'm just grateful to have had this time with y'all like truly um, I'm always wanting to learn and I know in our department that is something we desire to is to always learn so we can you know move forward in a way that makes um, sense for everyone not just for one person you know or a certain group of people but for everyone and so for you all to share your stories this helps us to also shape our future you know to think about what the future looks like and so I just tell y'all, and I mean, y'all know I'm, listen, I'm, I'm all about this. Thank y'all. Like, all right. thank every single one of you so, so much. We got to see the coolest experiences, the, hear the greatest stories. And honestly, just um, the beauty of your experiences um, and you involving us into your lives um, means the world. So thank y'all so much. Thanks to everyone who tuned in to our community stories um, with Grant Street with the Grand Street Women, um, you will be able to check this out on our YouTube. Um, it'll be available for those who are on Facebook Live. We hope you enjoyed yourselves um, and just learn so much in that, that it was also a sobering time to just see kind of like what, you know, memories have been shared with us. And so thank you again, Women of Grand Street, Grand Street y'all rock. Y'all already know y'all rock. Some of the coolest people out here. And I appreciate you. Um, everyone have a fantastic day. And we will talk to you next time. Have a good one, y'all.